Welcome to the tutorial for Wacky Weave Celtic Knots. Now in this tutorial we are going to make this little coaster and this little coaster will teach you all the techniques you need for Wacky Weave Celtic Knots. The border is different on this one than in all my previous curls and you can easily use this border for um, uh, for instance Wacky Weave Bobbit you can also change the way um, Wacky Weave Squares look with this. Uh, Wacky Weave Lock Cabin is slightly different and Wacky Weave Rainbow is also slightly different as those were uh, projects that were done in the round. Um, that said, the final border of the blanket of Wacky Weave Celtic Knots, when we've joined all the blocks, the final border can be used for the other projects such as Wacky Weave um, Rainbow in the Round and Lock Cabin. Okay, so let's get started. This is a complete tutorial on interlocking, so it's going to be a long one. Um, make yourself comfortable, get your yarn and everything, and most importantly, get the pattern for the coaster. You have to follow me on the pattern. Monkey see, monkey do does not help here because there's not a video for every block. I'm not going to do that. So you need to follow the pattern so that you can learn to read the pattern. Okay? Alright, let's start. You need two colors of yarn. I'm using the colors. This is the leftovers from my um, Wacky Weave Celtic Knots. This is the kit in the uh, Burgach um, colors it's a deep deep purple and a very light lilac okay you are going to work with a main color and a contrast color this one is our main color and this one is our contrast color now previous wacky weave projects most of them were very nicely reversible this one is not on the front there's a beautiful Celtic knot but on the back it doesn't look that great so the entire blanket has got a very definite right side and a wrong side. Keep that in mind when you choose your colors. Um, your blanket will have your darker color making the knots and the border of the complete blanket. All right, let's get started. One, row 1A, it says with your main color and a 3.5 hook, chain 24. Right, there's my slip knot. And I'm going to chain 24. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, yarn, 17, 18, 19, 20, 1, 2, 3, 4. Okay. Now make a note. If you want to do your own blocks, your starting chain is al always your number of windows that you want times 2 plus 4. Okay, that will become a little bit more clearer for the newbies later on. Right, we've chained 24 and it says DC1 in the 6th chain from the hook. We don't count the one that's on the hook, that's our working loop. We count from here. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 and we make a DC. I use American terminology. Oh, if you are used to DK termino um, UK terminology, then you need to make a treble. Alright, we've done the DC1 in the 6th chain from the hook. Now there's a bracket. Whenever you see a bracket, there's a repeat. So it says chain 1, skip 1, DC1. 10 times. So this stitch was already used. You can see it's pulled nicely open. We're going to skip one and we're going to make a double crochet in the next one. So we are making little windows. Can you see? Chain one, skip one, DC one. I apologize that I'm slightly shaky. That's because of the medication that I had to take and it's really, really not nice. Okay, chain one, skip one, double crochet. We're going to talk about the chain just now. Chain one, skip one, double crochet. And again. And again, and I need yarn. 
right and again chain one skip one and now we're in the last hole okay you need to check okay before I carry on I'm going to chain four and I will explain to you just now why I'm doing that and I'm taking it out okay we have 10 windows you need to count it says you should have 10 windows in the width one two three four five six seven eight nine ten correct and now you place this one down you want your working loop and your yarn on this side where the tail is this side right so we put it down like that now we're going to start with row 1b row 1b says with contrast color and a three and a half hook now remember that three and a half hook is for the yarn that we prescribe for the um, cal if you're using something else use a crochet hook suitable to the yarn that you're using and we're going to chain 22 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 10 11 12 13 14 15 16 17 18 19 20 1 and 2 right we've got 22 okay let's stop here for a sec there are three ways to start interlocking there's a weave method there's an overlay method and then there's the double trellis method we, we refer to this commonly as a trellis in crochet it makes these little windows so if you're going to weave you will probably start something like this it will depend on the pattern with wacky weave squares we've just gone one up one down the entire time because the border covered it if I were to do that cal now I would do it differently all right so we're not going to weave the overlay thing is what I want to do. The, the trellis, double trellis one, let me just show you what happens. Um, if I start in the sixth chain from the hook now, one, two, three, four, five, six. I'm just going to do three just to show you what happens and then I'll frog it again. So we're going to make a second trellis with the contrast color. Like so. Now this method you will never ever see me use. I dislike it immensely. Okay. What will happen is we will place this like that. And now we will start to crochet here at the top. But what happens is this. You've got this little flap thingy there. It will drive me insane. My OCD doesn't allow for that. So that one I ditched very early on in my interlocking crochet journey. I don't like it at all. Okay, I'm putting my main color trellis down. And let's see, let me just undo these. I don't want them. Okay, we are going to overlay this chain onto the trellis like this. Now note, the end is more or less here in this little window. Okay, and the bulk, the extra is on this side now you need to take care to make sure you're working in the right direction I don't want to use the terms right and left because I'm gonna flip this video for the left-handed people so I'm gonna say this side so that if I flip it it will still be correct for the left-handed people okay so you want to place your trellis in your main color like this in front of you working loop and you're on this side your Contrast color, you're going to have the tail end on the side and you're going to start crocheting from here. All right. Okay, we know that we start in the sixth chain from the hook. If you look at row two, um, row one B, sorry, we've chained the 22. It says um, start in the sixth chain from the hook in the second main color window. Okay, I'm fidgeting, I'm sorry six color from the hook now very important in the second window here's the first window we want to make a stitch in the second window here right we're going to start in the sixth chain one two three four five six is that right one two three 
four, five, six. Okay. And we're going to make a DCIF double crochet in the back. Right. We're going to come in, we yarn over, and we put our hook from the back into this window. And we hook that chain that we want to go into and we drag it out to the back like that. Let me do it for you again. Count your chains. One, two, oh, I can't see. One, two, three, four. Ooh, let me just bring this closer to me. Eyes. One, one, two, three. I think I'm in the right one. Okay, we, we yarn over for a double crochet. We push our hook in. We catch the chain, we drag it out to the back, and now we complete the double crochet as we normally do. And immediately you can see you've joined the two pieces together. Right. Now, in your abbreviations you will see that we use B, a capital B, and a capital F. The capital B is DC in the back, chain one. The capital F is DC in the front, chain one. So we're going to make eight back stitches. We've done one now. Let's do another one. Yarn over. Now, if I bring this up close, the stitch, the chain, we've used that chain. It's standing in the window. We're going to skip a chain. It's sitting here on the pillar of your main color. We're going to go into the next one. Yarn over. Come in from the back. Catch the chain, drag it out towards the back, and complete your stitch. Oh, I've left out my chain. Yikes! Don't do what I do. Make a chain, make a chain. Okay, I forgot the chain. Yarn over, in from the back, catch the chain, drag it to the back, and complete your stitch. We've got two. Chain one. Don't forget your chain ones. Yarn over, come in from the back, Catch the chain, drag it to the back, and complete your stitch. We've got three. Chain one. From the back, into the chain, out towards the back. Finish. Chain one. In from the back, out towards the back. Finish. Chain one. Skip a stitch. It's sitting there on the pillar. Remember to skip a stitch every time. Very important. Uh, in from the back, into the chain, and we finish our stitch. And another one. Oopie. Wrong window. Now your alignment is extremely important in this. You have to make sure that you're working in the right places. Okay, how many stitches have we got? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And now it says DCIF in the last chain. Now can you see what happened here? That chain is used. That one I'm going to skip. I'm going to go into this one. I started in the fifth chain from the hook when I started. I didn't start in the sixth one. That's why I've got an extra chain there. I'm just going to leave it like that. Okay. If you do the front stitch, this is the biggest downfall of everybody that tries to do interlocking. It's the front stitch. You yarn over and you push your yarn into the chain to make a stitch in the front but never ever in interlocking crochet do you want to see two colors on your hook if you can see two colors draped over your hook then you can know there is a problem so what do we do when we make a front we go into the stitch but we reverse and we bring our hook over the other color so that we only have one color here on the hook and now I can finish the stitch. Don't worry about it. We're going to do lots of them at the moment. Two, three, four. Okay. You can see now, if you count on this side, you will see that you've got 10 windows in your main color. We've counted them before. Let's count them again. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. If you count your contrast color, you will see that you only have nine. One, 
two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Your contrast color will always have one window less than your main color. You have to count in interlocking crochet. You can't stop counting, then it's going to be a disaster. Okay? Now, why did I make the chain four here? Each row starts with a chain four. I prefer to do that chain four at the end of the row, then it's ready for when I start the next row. Why is that? Because it's easier to place my colors where I want them if it's got this little tail that I can work with. If there's just a little stitch sitting there, a mistake happens very fast. I strongly recommend that you do your chain four at the end of the row instead of at the beginning of the row. Or row, although I cannot write it in the pattern like that, it would seem very funny. So you just make a mental note to do your chain four when you finish the one row and then take your hook out. Okay, this is what you have right now. Something you need to concentrate on. Your contrast color is on the inside. There's main color outside of this one. There's main color outside this side. And there's main color outside this side. Never ever do you want to see this contrast color climb over on the outside edge. If that happens, then you know you've got a problem and you need to fix it. Okay. We are now going to turn around. Row 2A says, with contrast color to the back. So this one, you want it on that side. The back is the side away from you. Front is the side facing you. And it's got nothing to do with the right and the wrong side of the blanket. Whatever side is facing you, that is front, that is back. So we're going to place the contrast color at the back and we want to make sure that this one sits like this. What I normally do is I take the contrast color and pull it straight out horizontally this side so I know it's going to stay there. And we're going to crochet with our main color. Now when you insert your hook, Take a look at the yarn that runs over the hook. You want the yarn to run over the hook from the back towards you. If I place my hook in like this, you will see that the yarn is going from me over the hook that way. That's wrong. Take your hook out and make sure that the yarn runs towards you. Although nobody will see it when you crochet like that, it's me and my OCD. It drives me nuts. Alrighty, let's start with... 2A. Now make a mental note. Every A row is in your main color. Every B row is in your contrast color. So we're going to crochet an A row and then a B row and only then do we turn. We don't turn after an A row. Good. It says chain 4. I've already done that. Then it says B for double crochet in the back. So I yarn over, I come in from the back, I catch the stitch, both loops. I want to see both loops on the hook and I finish the double crochet. Chain one. Don't forget the chain. Right, then it says 2F. So now we're going to make two fronts. Now remember the front is the damn bugger in this. You've got to watch yourself. A careless mistake happens fast and I'm going to show you what the mistake looks like. If you insert your hook into your uh, double crochet from the previous main color row, you will have that on your hook. Now remember I said if you have two colors on the hook you've got a problem, but it, you might just accidentally do it. So I'm going to finish the stitch and show you what happens. Immediately you can see these two long legs here. You don't want that. Now on this side it looks like a front stitch. That is what we wanted to make. But on that side it also looks like a front stitch. So the pattern isn't going to work out. There shouldn't be anything here. It should be that side only. So let's frog the stitch. I always say to people if you pull into your garage with your car and you park 
you go in nose first and you park. The next morning you want to go to work, so you're getting to the car. You can't drive through the wall. You first have to reverse and then you can drive off. So let's pretend this is a car parked in a garage. We yarn over. We get into the car. We reverse the car out of the garage and now we can drive on. All you need to do, if you yarn over and you insert your hook, all you need to do is throw off the chain space from the other color. You don't want it on the hook. The rule says you can only make a main color stitch on a main color stitch. You cannot make a main color stitch on a contrast color stitch. There's no marriage across the culture lines here. They are very old-fashioned. They are racist, if you want to call it that. Whatever it takes to help you remember. Lilac is with lilac. Purple is with purple. We don't interbreed here. Okay? Sorry, that's the only analogy I could think of. Okay. It says two fronts. So let's yarn over. We go into the stitch and I just throw the other one off the hook so that I only have my main contrast, my main color on the hook. And now I can finish the double crochet. Chain one and another one. Into the stitch, reverse, out of the garage. And now we can finish the stitch. Now if I turn it around now, you will see that those two stitches are probably, properly at the back. This chain from the purple covers it. They no longer on this side. Alrighty. And a chain one. Then it says three backs. Sorry, let me just get my yarn. Three backs. So in from the back, grab the stitch, drag it out to the back. One. Chain one. And <clears throat> now, <coughs> sorry, what you will see now is you can either still do this, but it's already standing there at the back, but you can easily get confused. Be careful. I'm going to fold this one just a little bit forward with my thumb so that I can reveal those stitches at the back and quickly make them without worrying about the windows. The problem that arises from this is that some people will do this and then they won't know where the hell they are and where they're going. So careful with this method of cheating, okay? I've got three at the back, chain one, then it says two fronts. Now you've got to check. These two are standing. That one belongs to this window. That one belongs to this window. That one belongs to this window. So let's make a front in the next one. Two fronts. Into the stitch. Reverse. You don't want to see the purple. We finish the stitch. There's one. Chain one. And another front. Into the stitch. Catch both the, the, the loops from the stitch. Throw off the purple and we finish. Two fronts and one back. This is a very important one. You need to pull it through the right window. So we're going to come in from the back, push it into the stitch, drag it out towards the back. Oy. Let's try that one again, like so. And we complete our stitch. And the very last stitch of your arrows is always a DC outside in the last window. So we're going to make the DC in the window, not in a chain, in the window, outside, away from the contrast color. One, two, three, four, take out my hook. And you've got that now. Check and see that yours look the same as mine. And then we can carry on with row 2B. If yours looks different, check it both sides, then frog it and redo it. It needs to look like this on the one side and like that on the other side. Okay, now I put this thing down and I go to wee wee and I come back. How do I know where the hell am I supposed to crochet? It's very confusing. Okay, it's not that bad actually. You can take your windows and count your windows on the side, your, your main color windows. We've got one and we've got two. 
Are we supposed to start with three now? No. You cannot turn unless both of these are together on the same side. So immediately we know, oh no, I must still do my B. My B is sitting on this side, so it hasn't been done yet. If it was done, it would have been on that side with the A yarn. Right, so let's do row 2B. Row 2B has got a, <clears throat> an abbreviation that says A3B. It means alternate three stitches starting with a back. So we're going to make a back stitch. Now note, we start in the second window. Because this chain 4 is the stitch for this window. For every B window, there's an A stitch that stands in the middle. For every A window, there's a B stitch that stands in the middle. This first window has got a stitch. It's the chain 4. It's the only times that you will see me start a new row with chains instead of a twisted double crochet. It's an interlocking. So we're going to start in the second window, A, 3, B. Alternate 3, starting with the back. So we start with a back stitch. We come in from the back, catch that stitch, take it out towards the back, both loops on the hook, and we finish it. Now we alternate. So the next one is front. Into the stitch, out of the garage, drive off. That's 2. Chain 1. Next one is back again because we are alternating. So in from the back, into the stitch, out to the back and we finish our stitch. So now we have alternated three stitches starting in the back. There is a back and a front and a back. That is our alternation done. Now it says two fronts. Ok, yarn over, into the garage, reverse and drive off. And again, remember your chains in between, don't forget your chains. Into the car, reverse, drive off. Oh, my yarn is stuck. Yikes. Chain one. And then it says again, alternate, three in the back. So we start with a back stitch in from the back, catch the stitch, out towards the back, and now we finish it. That's one and a front, inside, reverse, finish. That's two, and another back. In from the back, into the stitch, out towards the back, finish it. There's our three alternated stitches, and then it says um, to be DCIB in the last window. Okay, now don't get caught here. Here's your B window. It will hide from you. It, it pulls tight towards your main color. You want to make a double crochet in that window. So all you need to do is fold your working yarn and loop from your main color forward to expose that window and go into the window. Not into a chain, into the window. And we finish one, two, three, four. So that's row 2 done. This was the side facing you when you crocheted it. And this is what it looks like now. Okay. We're ready to start with 3A. Now 3A starts and it says with contrast color to the front. So I drop this one down. I want it in front of my main color. So here it is, it's in front. And I can put my hook into my main color now. And I can do 3A. 3A says with CC to the front, we've got it here in the front. Chain 4, we've already done that. 9 fronts. Okay. Yarn over. Into the car, reverse the car, drive off. Chain 1, and again, into the car, reverse, drive off, and again, and another one, 
You remember to reverse. You don't want to grab the yarn when there's two colors on your hook. Never, ever. It's considered sinning. In, out, finish. We. In, out, come on. And we finish the stitch. And another one. You can see that my left thumb quickly takes off the other color. Watch my thumb here. I'm going to put it in and my thumb throws that purple off the hook. Chain one. Another front. Chain one. Another front. And a DC outside, outside in the last window. And that is our A row complete. One, two, three, four for the next one. That's what you have now. So let's do B. 2B. 2B says alternate 3 starting in the back. So we come in from the back. Remember, we're going to start in the second window because this one belongs to the first window. Can you see? Start in the second window with the back. Catch the stitch. Drag it out towards the back and we finish it. Now we need to do a front because we are alternating. Am I reading this correctly? One, two, three. Oh, I'm on row three. Sorry. Oh, my word. I'm in row three already. Now, what did I do with row two? Let me just check here. Oh, it was row three. Okay. Sorry, I had my numbers mixed up. We're in row three B. One, two, three. Three main colors already done. This is on the one side. We must go that way. So we're on row 3B. Sorry about that. Front. Starts off with a front. And then four back. From the back into the stitch. Make sure you catch both the loops. One. Chain one. And a two. Can you see I'm just working behind this at the moment? And a three. And a four. Now with the next stitch we must make sure we go into the right window. So we're going to count. One, two, three, four windows where the stitches were made. And we're going to the next one. And the next one says alternate three starting in the front. So we start with the front. Reverse. And the back. And another front again. Now I need to sort out my yarn. It's caught somewhere. And the last is DCIF in the last window. Now remember we're talking about the purple window. You can't plant that stitch in there. It doesn't belong. Color on color. So we make a double crochet in the last window. Not in the chain, in the window. Three, four. Okay, that is what you have after row 3B. That's the right side. And this is the wrong side. Okay? It's looking good, is it? Not that bad at all. Okay, I'm just going to sort out my yarn. I'll be right back. Let's start with row four. We've got our working yarns of both colors on the same side. So now we can turn safely. And what I always do, I keep one yarn on my right hand side and the other color on my left hand side 
so that it stays away from each other. Otherwise, it becomes a big mess. I don't know why my parrot is screaming like that. Please excuse her. I can't put her anywhere else. Okay, one, two, three. We're now going to do row four. With contrast color to the back, so I place it at the back, out of my way. I hold it in my hand here for the first stitch. It starts off with a back. Now, I know it seems very confusing at times. Your main color is on the outside. So when you start a main row, you start in the first B window because the A is on the outside. But when you start a B row, you're going to start in the second A window because the first one has got the, the little tail on it. Just concentrate that you don't start in this first stitch. That's, that's the biggest concern. Don't start in this first stitch. This chain 4 is the first stitch and the chain 1 for the turn. So we're going to start with the back. We come in from the back, grab that stitch, push it out towards the back, only lilac on my hook, and I finish the stitch. And chain 1. Don't forget the chain. And the next one is an F, so it's a front chain 1. Go in, we reverse out, and we finish the stitch. There's a front. Now it says two backs. Right, next window, in through the window, out, and we make the back stitch. Chain one, and another one. Next window, grab the stitch out, and, oh no, my hook is in the wrong place. Hang on, hang on. Let me just catch both loops. There we go. You see I've got both loops. Two in the back and now four in the front. Now can you see your alignment is very important. If you look here, you can see the stitch peeping through the hole. There's the stitch that I'm going to use. There's the next one. There's the next one. They're peeping through the holes at you. They can easily hide. Okay, so let's do how many fronts? Four fronts. So into the stitch, reverse, finish. One. Chain one. Into the stitch, reverse, finish. Two. Chain one. And another front. Three. Remember your chain ones in between. And four. What comes after this? A back. Last one is a back and then we DC outside in the last window. Make sure you don't accidentally do this. You don't want to catch both the chains. You only want to catch that one of the con a main color. And one, two, three, four and that is my a row done. Okay, the B row now. Let's make sure. One, two, three, four, B. Four B says two F's. Now remember, that's what I spoke about when I started this row. This stitch belongs to this first window. I need to start in the second window. And we're starting with what? Uh, 4B, two fronts. Okay, into the stitch, reverse, and finish. That's one, and another one, into the stitch, reverse, and finish. There's our two fronts. The next one is a back, in from back, into the stitch, push it out, and we finish. And now five fronts. That's going to be nice. Reverse. Remember to reverse. Chain one. And another one. Two. Three. Four. And a five. 
And the very last one says DCIB back in the last window. So we fold this one down and we go into that little back window there. One, two, three, four. Okay, this is what you have with the side that faced you. And this is what you have on the right hand side. You happy? Okay. Row five. Contrast color to the front. So I drop it back down here where it's out of my way. I'm going to hold it. Oh, no. Okay. Let's go for row five. I'm holding this one in my hand to keep it there. Row 5A is a nice row, all in the front. Yay, it's going to be fast. Okay, into the stitch, reverse, finish. One, and a two, and a three, and a four. And a five, and a six, and a seven, and eight. And a nine, and we always always finish with a DC outside in the next window. Outside, you want to keep your contrast color inside the entire time. Okay, let's see. This contrast color makes this little frame. Can you see? It has to go uninterrupted right around. That is what creates this little inside border on the deep purple. Let's do our B row. Five B says there's a little bracket that indicates a repeat two back front twice. Okay, so let's go two back. Now sometimes it's difficult to see the stitch. Especially now, all of these are now in front. Fold them over so that you can see where the stitch is if you want to make a back one. It says two backs. Okay, there's the next one. And a front. Now I have to fold it to get the front. So I need to know which window am I now going to work in. Because we pull like this and we pull the thing out of proportion. So if you're in, unsure, that chain belongs to the first window, that one belongs to the second window, that one belongs to the third window, so I've got to go into the fourth window, which is this one, and reverse. Reverse. Okay, and we're going to do that again. Two back, one front. I fold it forward to C, one, and a two, and a front. One, two windows. There's my front window. And you must look at the picture. Look at the photo and make sure that what you have at the end of the row is exactly what we have on the photo. Uh, two back front, two back front. So I repeat is done and then it's just two back. Have I made a chain? Yes, I have. A back. And another back. And the front in the last window. Okay. Now, we've all been taught to chain with a bigger hook so that our blocks don't do that. Normally, if you chain and you crochet, the chain pulls in and your block goes wider to the top and it's disproportionate. So we chain with a bigger hook 
so that the chain is more stretchy and we get a straight hook but with interlocking that doesn't work and I'll tell you why you can see that this little block is perfect it doesn't flare it doesn't pull in at the bottom and the reason is this interlocking has this weaving effect it weaves through and because of this weaving effect it pulls in so the top of the block has actually pulled in so it is in line with the chain from the block normally the top of the block flares a little bit and the bottom pulls in if you chain with a bigger hook in interlocking your bottom side is going to be slightly wavy it's going to look very unneat because there's a pulling in towards the top now here's the thing if you want to make swatches with interlocking crochet to determine how much yarn you're going to need for a bigger project you have to do about five to ten rows so that this pulling in effect can be fully there before you measure how many windows you get in a 10 centimeter distance if you do it after just one or two rows you will get a bigger number than what you actually should have and you will end up making a garment or something that's way too small been there done that i've got the t-shirt or rather i've got the damn jacket that i had to give away because it wasn't fitting okay let's turn row six contrast color to the back so i have it here in my hand i hold it behind the main color and it says nine back yay all in the back so now we can have a good nice cheat we fold it forward am i in the right place one two three four five six a yes six a nine in the back so i'm just going to fold this forward and work into the stitches now have you seen me work into a chain space in the middle of the block anywhere no we don't we place a stitch on a stitch of the same color we never go into the chain spaces and we do not go into stitches of a different color not at all a stitch on a stitch of the same color so this entire row is in the back I can just push this a little bit forward and peep through there I don't have to worry about the windows except like here I must make sure my alignment stays the same you don't want to go in here for instance and it happens and then grab that stitch this way it happens it happens in my classes a lot of times where people lose the alignment and they pull a stitch into the wrong window you don't want to do that so make sure and count after each row after an a row there should be 10 a windows after a b row there should be nine b windows and we're gonna dc outside in the last window four one two three four okay that's what you have after row six a on the front it looks like this now you can see that when the knot when the one piece goes underneath it comes out again there it doesn't touch the bar where it goes underneath this one goes under and it climbs out there and you see there's there's color there and there's color there if for instance this one ran right up to that purple line and that one was purple you can know it's a mistake you can't have it joined here but detached there it's got to be detached on both sides of the line underneath which it goes righty let's do our B row 6B um, 5 fronts okay into the stitch reverse it's very easy this one because you're working in front of the other color all you must remember is to reverse every time two and three 
and four. How many must we make? Five. And a five. Alrighty, and then it says one back, two fronts. Okay. This one is easy to gauge which window because it was caught here in the weaving process, so it sits where it's supposed to sit. There's a back and two fronts. Reverse, reverse, reverse. One and two. And we push this one down and we go into that last window. One, two, three, four, and out. Okay, that's the back side, wrong side. And this is the front side. Is yours looking the same? I hope so. Alrighty, let's go for number seven. Seven A. Right, 7A starts with a front and then a back. Okay, now there's the front. Let's go into the first one. We reverse, we make the stitch. There's the front and now the back. Now flatten it with your fingers if you need to to check that your alignment is correct. This one helps you so you know that this one goes through that window there. If you pull it through the wrong window, everything is going to be a mess. That's easy to avoid just by checking after each row that your number of windows are correct and that it's nice blocks sitting there. They're not skew or slanted or pulled in any direction. <coughs> okay, we've done a front and a back. Now we've got two fronts. In, reverse, over and finish one and again into the stitch reverse and finish it's two now four back after a little while this becomes very very easy your eyes are used to it your hands are used to it and you will be able to find the stitch or the window with no problem whatsoever just <clears throat> be kind to yourself and allow yourself a little bit of time to battle. Remember how much you battled when you started to crochet? You had 10 thumbs. This is not much different. It's a totally new skill, although it's built on crochet, but um, the technique is very different. So allow yourself to, to battle a little bit. It's not the end of the world. And the last one is a front. And then we're going to do our DC outside in the last window. Now see what happens here. I've pulled it. And my, my main color has started to creep in here. And this is one of the easiest mistakes to make. If you're not concentrating, you're going to make the DC there. And think you're done. And there you sit with your B on the outside. You don't want that ever to happen. This must not be outside. So let's frock this last stitch. And remember, give this a yank if you need to. You want it on the outside. Outside in the last window. Like that. Outside. And we chain four. One, two, three, four. Okay. Let's do our B row. Seven B. It starts with alternate three, starting in the front. So there's the first one. One in the front. Two will be in the back. Come in from the back into the stitch. Drag it out towards the back and finish. And another one in the front. Then we're finished with the alternating ones. There we've alternated front, back, front. A, 3, F. Now we're going to do four in the back. 
one and two and a three and a four four back and a front in reverse oh i've only got one loop there hang on let me just catch them both why are you so stubborn okay there we go i've put my hook into the stitch i've dragged it out to the front there's a front and a dcif in the last window one two three four and that is what you have after row seven that's the right side and this is the wrong side okay we are ready for row eight row eight starts and it says with cc to the back so we have the contrast color behind our little tail here i'll hold it there Mm, my hook is not right better okay 8a has got nine backs so the whole row is in the back but now we can't cheat anymore because the weaving is of such a nature that i've go have to go through every window to catch the right stitch two three from the window into the stitch out to the back three Four. This one is not too bad. Five. Six. Seven. Eight. And nine. And we DC outside in the last window. Like so. One, two, three, four. Done. Okay. Now the B row. And then we turn. 8B says alternate three starting in the back. This is the first window. I need to start in the second window. A back. Oopie, that was a miss. Oh. Okay, back. We're alternating three, so now we have a front. And we have a back. That's our alternating done. Then it says two front. Oi. Reverse, 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 always reverse with the front stitches. You don't want two colors on your hook when you yarn over. Two back. And again, alternate three starting in the back. Back stitch. My parrot is annoyed and I don't know why. Front stitch. And a back stitch. Oh, come on, you. <sniffs> yep. okay, there's the back. And we DCIB. So we fold this one forward so that we can make a back stitch in the last window of the contrast color. One, two, three, four. Right. After row eight, this is the side that was facing you. And this is the right side. Looking cool, yay! Okay, row nine. Okay, row nine. It starts with a front. Remember to reverse. 
two back. Three front. One, two, and three. Three fronts. Am I right? We're busy with row nine A. No? Yeah. Okay, two in the back. One. And a two. And we end with a front and a DC outside in the last window. There. Okay, there's our A row. One, two, three, four. Nine B. Let's quickly do that one. It says eight back stitches, so they're all going to be in the back. <clears throat> be careful through which window you pull the stitch. <clears throat> Sorry, I have a frog in me throat. Two, three, four. Uh, six. Okay, I want to make a mistake. I'm not going to do the chain. Just to show you what happens if you leave the chain out. Okay, so this is a deliberate mistake. Don't do it on your side. I'm just doing it on my side. And we immediately make the back in the next window. And we carry on. We didn't see that mistake happen. We don't know about it. We will find it in the next row. I should have done it actually a little bit earlier, but never mind. And we end with a DC in the front and then it says end off your contrast color now let me teach you how to end off properly you chain one you cut your yarn you pull through and now hold with your left hand tight pinch there and pull this yarn to the to diagonally down this way. That causes that little knot to fall into the stitch. Then it doesn't sit out here like a sore thumb. Right. So you've done the block. This is what it looks like on the front. And that is what it looks like on the back. Now we ended off the um, contrast color. But we're going to do the last row with our main color. There's a 10A um, row. Row 10A. So let's quickly do row 10A. And it's all in the front. All the stitches are in the front. So go in reverse and finish the stitch. And chain 1. And we go in and we reverse, finish the stitch. Okay, if you look at these two, they're very close together because I didn't have the chain. Am I going to frock back all the way there just to put the chain in? No, I'm going to cheat it. I'm just going to make it as if there is a chain and force them a little bit apart. You don't want more than one or two of these mistakes in a row. It's going to distort your pattern. But if there's just one, you can still salvage it. You can just carry on. It's not the end of the world. Oh, my word. This is now because of the hardy dust that fly over. Whenever she sees the big hardy dust coming into the garden or out of the garden, she screams like a bloody banshee. You would think that by now she's figured out that she's inside and they can't get to her. But no, I will scream. Life with a parrot is interesting. And one more. Okay. 
and DC outside in the last window. Now you will see that I end off before I start the border. I always do because it gives a neater end result. Come on. Pinch and pull inside. You see? Gives you a neat, neat little corner there. You don't have this thing that sits outside here like can't stand it. Alright, now we're going to do the border. Now the interesting thing about this is you're going to do the um, contrast colors borders first. You first do the purple border, the inside one, and then you do the outside one because they are connected. Alrighty, so we're going to start. It says switch to a three millimeter hook. Oh my word, where's my hook? I need to find my hook. I'll be right back. Surely you would think by now I would remember to put everything on the table, but I always forget something. Okay, why are we switching to a smaller hook? Remember when I told you that we're not going to use a bigger hook for the chain at the bottom because the crochet work pulls in. If you use the same hook now to make a border, your border will start to wave. The border is going to be too loose for this because this pulls in. So we switch to a smaller hook. So I use a 3mm here. And it says, start with a standing single crochet in any window. Okay, any window, standing single crochet. There is a video on Patreon for those of you who are subscribed to my tutorial videos. So I'm not going to go through that in detail. I'm just going to make it. So we make a single crochet through two in any window. And it says crochet two single crochets in every side window and five in every corner window. Okay, I've got one there, so I make another one in the same window. Next window, two singles. Next window, two singles. Next window, two sing singles. Okay, when I get here, this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to thread my tail through the windows in the direction in which I am crocheting. Like so. I flip it over and I pull it through. The whole tail. Please don't cut tails that are two centimeters long. For goodness sake, I don't know how the hell your nerves make it. Mine would never survive. Make a decent tail so that it doesn't come apart with regular wear, tear, washing, using, whatever. Okay, like so. Alright, let's go back. I've got two in this window, right, and I'm going to make five in the corner window. One, two, three, and four, and five. And now again, two in every side window. One, two, next window. One, two, next window. All right, I'm going to carry on around this thing until I get back to where I started and I will meet you up there because this is straightforward. Two single crochets in each window until you reach the corner. If you get to the corner, thread your yarn through and crochet over it. Five singles in the corner, two in every side window. I'll see you at the end of this round. I've gone right around with the border and I can now end off. Now what I'm going to do, I'm going to cut my yarn. I don't chain to close this, not at all. I just simply pull the stitch out. This is the invisible join. If you want more information on this or if you want a detailed instruction, it is on my Patreon uh, crochet tutorial page and I'm not going to get this into the needle that way. Just give me a moment. Let me just get this in. Uh, you know, some days are just better than others and some days you can't get the yarn into the damn needle. That's just how the way, how life works. Okay. You're going to see that I have two tails now. Here it's a starting tail where I started with a standing um, single and my end tail. You can if, you'd, if you've done the first single crochet of the row, you can thread your starting tail through as well and then 
um, weave it away. Now this is the result. There's nothing funny there. There isn't a chain sitting in the middle of nowhere to get um, height before you do the border. That's why I end off and I start again. I want neat results. That's just me. So, okay. When you weave your tails away, there's a video on Patreon for the tails as well. There's a reason why I'm using a short, uh, uh, not a short, a sharp needle. Um, if you haven't joined Patreon yet, please consider it. That's my... A uh, big tutorial um, platform and um, yeah okay I'm gonna leave that one for now I'll weave it away later and this little one is the threaded one that comes all the way from there it was threaded in woven in and then I crocheted over it so I can clip that off okay so now the front looks very beautiful and the back looks a little bit silly because that one is standing in all directions so let's do the border for our main color if I can find my yarn. Come on here. Okay. For the main color, we're also going to use the 3 millimeter hook. And we're going to start with um, a half double. A standing half double. Anywhere. No, not anywhere. I'm lying. Starting with a standing half double crochet in the middle stitch of the 5 contrast color corner stitches so these five stitches that I've used now I'm going to start in the middle of one of them with the other color okay let's see one two three there is the standing double crochet now what does it say let's just see let's just read through this whole border start with a standing half double crochet in the middle stitch of the five contrast color stitches remember to catch the corner main color chain behind in other words you crochet over it and then HDC 2 in the same stitch all right so what we want to do now now this is no longer interlocking this is normal crochet you're doing a normal border so now you can have two colors on there because we're catching this chain right around of the of the main color we're going to catch it let's first weave that in let's take this one away so that we have less tails at the end let's quickly weave this one through a little while go there and in the next one then it's less tails for us to weave in there isn't that much movement on these ones and they've been secured when we ended them off so it's not a big risk to do it like this alrighty okay go away you right half double crochet catching both one two three in the third one and I catch that chain behind it and I make a half double crochet standing there's a video for the standing as well and it says two more is it right two more in the same stitch same place same stitch we make two more one and two all right then it says HDC one in the next contrast color stitch and the next main color window so I catch the next purple stitch and I make sure that I go into the next window. I don't want to be in the corner window anymore. I want to be there. Righty. Now it says HDC1 in the next contrast color stitch and the same window. So what are we doing? We're catching every stitch here, but we want two stitches in each window at the back. So we've already got one in here. Was it in the right place? No, it wasn't. Hang on, let me just get my bearings here. Using the same corner space. Okay, no, I'm fine, I'm fine. Now we're going to go to the next one. Catch the stitch, next window. Catch the stitch, same window. Catch the next stitch, next window. 
catch the next stitch, stitch same window so if I turn this around you will see this window has got two stitches that window has got two stitches each window should get two and you will be able to use all of your contrast colors have I got two there? yeah okay next one next window next one same window next one next window I can feel it with my finger at the back don't think I'm clairvoyant or anything like that I feel it with my finger at the back okay next stitch next window next stitch same window next stitch next window next stitch same window I want to get to the corner next stitch next window I'm just going to pull this little tail that way I'll cut it off just now and next stitch same window next window and same window now this can be very very confusing what has happened now of those five stitches that we made in the contrast colors corner the one is moving out to the window on the side and the last one there is also going to move out so there's only going to be three left in here We're going to go into the corner window with that one HDC 1 in the next contrast color stitch and the corner window then HDC 3 in the next contrast color stitch in the same window so when we reach the middle stitch of those five we're going to make three stitches in there and that gives us the turn to turn to the other side it gives us the, the corner same space right so this of these five stitches that were there one moved out there's the second one in the third one we've done three the fourth one we still want in the same corner window and the last one moves out to the next window and it's not difficult to get him there he actually wants to go there righty I'm now going to continue and then I'll meet you on this side. Maybe I will do one. Okay, I'll meet you on the corner and I'll do another corner with you. I'm at the window. <coughs> There's the window for the corner. I'm at the corner, sorry. There's the window for the corner and there's the one next to it. Now that one next to it has got one stitch so far. Only one. It needs a second one. Now you can see that I'm right up to the five stitches of the contrast color so the first stitch moves out to the side window you see the next one is in the corner window the next one is in the corner window and it gets three stitches one two and three the next one is in the corner window so we've again got five stitches in the corner window and the next one moves out to the next window like so right I'm gonna go around and I'll meet you here at the end I'm right at the end there's one stitch left remember we started in the third stitch the first one I've caught in this last side window and the um, second one must go into the corner window again and there we have it now I can end off pull through and do an invisible join and then we are done oh I'm always looking for sharp needles with big eyes and these ones are particularly very nice okay invisible join as I mentioned before it's on my patreon page and um, yeah 
So now, I will weave those away just now. Let's just turn this thing the right way up like so. There is your little block. Now, don't block it. You don't need to block it. Because we are going to join it with a very solid join, it will automatically pull into shape. I'm talking about your, the blocks of your blanket and the big project now, not these small ones. If you want to block these, I'd never, I, I never block interlocking. They just lay so nicely. It's just such a sturdy thing that it just lays the way it should. So I don't bother blocking at all. Um, very important when you do the border. You've got a count, double count, check, double check, because if your blocks if the number of stitches on the border is incorrect you're going to join the blocks you're going to have problems joining because the number of stitches will not be the same number that's problem one problem two is when you've joined everything let's say you've just made one mistake and it's sitting out here on the outside when you come around to do the the border for the entire blanket the stitches won't work out so you've got to concentrate 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 when you do the border that's another reason why I end off once the interlocking bit is done. I throw the blocks down and when I sit in front of the TV, I can do all the little borders because it's not that intricate. It's counting, yes, but it's not as intricate as the interlocking where you can't, you, you can't interlock in company or in front of the TV. Believe me, you're going to make a bloody big mess. Don't do it. So crochet the insides of the blocks when you have time an opportunity to concentrate and leave the borders for in front of the TV or when you have company because there's just two stitches, two stitches, two stitches until you get to the corner and there's five and when you do the second one you will pick it up very fast. Okay, so in this video you've now learned all the techniques for Wacky Weave Celtic Knots. If you've never done interlocking before I seriously recommend you do one or two of these blocks and if you get stuck post a photo. Don't ask a question if you don't post a photo. I cannot see through the world to see what you have done. You have to give me a photo and say to me this is what happened and even then maybe I, I should be able to help you but there are times where I'm like what the hell have you done? Then you must just bear with me. I'm going to ask you for a photo in the front and a photo of the back so that we can try and figure out what you have done. Okay, I'm going to post uh, a PDF document in this video um, underneath you can you can download it there it's the interlocking rules so you need to follow the rules okay if you keep the rules you will be fine if you are not going to use the prescribed yarn please do not use anything excessively fluffy it's very difficult to find the stitches if the yarn is extremely fluffy cotton works the best or um, even merino, I've, I've done a blanket with merino and it was an absolute joy to work with but mohair and novelty yarns, things like that, you're on your own if you start working with that and you have a mistake and I can't see, I can't help you because the, the novelty yarns, the fluffy yarns, the, the no, 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 no textured yarns even um, there's a textured cotton in South Africa that's very popular, Moya Caress. It's a textured cotton. I refer to it as a winter cotton. It's lovely for winter clothing in a place where it's not so cold as in South Africa. But it doesn't work for interlocking. The pattern disappears because the yarn is textured. You need a smooth yarn. Whatever you use, smooth yarn. Nothing fluffy, nothing fancy. Okay, people, I hope you are ready. Use this video to get on par and by the time that the 1st of March comes, then you will know exactly what to do. I'll see you then.